Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is a story about what if Deku's memory loss was manipulated part 1. If you guys enjoy this what if and want to see part 2 comment down below and let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also share this video with your friends and check out the description in my playlist so let's start the video. It had been several days of the bicolor boy's birthday. For personal reasons he could not be with his friends that day. They had the intention of waiting for him one night to give him some gifts that they had bought him. But at 10.30 p.m. He still wasn't arriving and Aizawa told them it was too late and they went to their rooms. We should leave at least the gifts somewhere to open them. Mina said she was about to leave. But I look at the gifts on the table. You're right. We should leave them at the door of his room. Momo said taking some gifts the rest of the students went to their respective rooms. Mina noticed that there were some papers nearby and decided to grab one to make a note to Shota. Once finished he grabbed the rest of the gifts and climbed into the elevator once she and Momo left the presents. She put the note on the door and returned to her room. About one hour later Todoroki arrived at the house. It was already too late so he was not surprised that there was no one awake. What surprised him was the surprise at his door. What is this? Asked Shoto surprised the first thing he grabbed was the note and began to read it. Happy birthday delayed Todoroki. We wanted to give you all these gifts in person. But the professor said that it was too late and we could not wait any longer. I wish you had a very happy day he called the attention that at the end of the letter had drawn a big red heart. Thank you all guys. He said it with a smile as he grabbed the presents and entered his room. The next day, those who shared a flat with the two color noticed that the gifts were gone, assumed that Shoto had taken them. Guess who picked up his gift? Momo said as she climbed down the elevator. I'm glad for him, Ada said. Momo hurry up, we have to leave in a few minutes. Right. That day several class couples had decided to go out together, which were Midoriya and Yuraka, Kaminari and Jiru, Ada and Momo, Ajiro and Hagakir, Kirishima and Bakugu and in the end Takoyami and Tsuyu. Once they were all together, they left after a few hours. Todoroki woke up and headed to the kitchen. He noticed that there was hardly anyone, which seemed strained. There were usually many of his friends at this time he did not give it much importance and went to serve his breakfast. While serving the milk first and then the cereal heard a familiar voice behind him. Hi Todoroki, hi Ashido, Shoto said without turning to see her. Did you like the gifts? Asked the pink girl with a smile on her face. Yes, I'm sorry for being late and not saying thank you. Calm down. There's no problem, no. He put effort and time into this and I didn't say anything Todoroki really felt bad about it. He wanted to thank all his friends, but almost none were. All. You are very sweet. But it's really fine, Mina insisted. It's Professor Aizawa's fault. I arrived almost at midnight. Until what time were you waiting for me? Almost until 10.30 p.m. But at that moment the teacher forced us to go to bed, so it's his fault haha, I'm really sorry. But thanks really once the cereal was finished. He sat at the table and Mina sat in front of him eating a sandwich, by the way. Who left me the note at my door? It was my idea, Mina say with shame. You put the heart too. Yes, it was me, she said it in the same tone. I liked it a lot. It was a nice gesture, Todoroki said smiling at her. Awa thanks, Mina said blushing. On your birthday I will do something special for you too. Oh, what will it be? A surprise, Shoto said while eating. By the way, where are everyone? All the girls left with their boyfriends and I stayed here alone. Mina answered while pouting. I have nothing to do today Todoroki upon noticing Mina's mood change. He came up with an idea. Do you want to hang out? You and me. Mina asked surprised at such a question. As sure after that, they both went to prepare for their date. After a few minutes they met at the entrance. Where do you want to go? Asked the bicolor. The game store. Sure, it can be fun. Both set out. Are you going a lot? Sometimes with the girls. Any favorite games? Claw machines, she said smiling. I've heard that you almost always lost on those machines. Yes, but I usually just look since I'm terrible at it haha. <laughs> Has anyone won anything? See you once won a stuffed frog. It was adorable. The last time I went to that store we had to go fast. Why? She asked confused. I'll give you clues. Shoto said using his fingers. Blonde. Explosion. Shark teeth. Oh no, would you rather go to a restaurant? <laughs> sure. The pink nodded. Which one? You choose. Do you like soba? Oh god, I love soba. Then let's go for soba, I invite. Sure. Totally after a few minutes. Mina wanted to do something but she was nervous. Todoroki, does it bother you if I take your hand while we walk? No, calm down, but. Would you rather take the hand on the cold or hot side? Cold please. I have some heat. She said while taking his hand they continued talking as they walked. Although Shoto didn't show it much, Mina's company was enjoying it a lot. Ladies first. Shoto said opening the restaurant door for Mina to enter first. Thank you, she said blushing. They both sat in a corner and ordered the food. They didn't want to remain silent. Well Ashido, we hardly know each other. Well, would you like to know something about me? Many things, well. Do you have any brothers or sisters? I have one older sister, one older brother. I had another one but. 
But, I don't know what happened to him. Oh I'm so sorry to do, Mina said putting her hands in her mouth. Don't worry, I have a feeling he is still alive and is somewhere. I'm glad to hear that. Do you want to know something about me? Before entering UA, did you meet anyone? I met Kiri in high school. Seriously? Shoto asked surprised. He was always you know. So manly. Well, do not tell anyone. But he was not always. One day suddenly changed and became like this. I can't imagine not being Kirishima manly. Haha. <laughs> If you drink water and activate your quirk, does it cold or get hot? A somewhat strange question. It depends on the side you use. I still try to use both, right? Mina remembered. Ask me. Ask me. Okay, who would you say is your best friend in the class? My shark Kirishima and Uraraka. Interesting. I was sure you would say Hagakir. Well, she too but is very obsessed with Ajiro, with his tail, just like Kaminari. They both laughed with that comment. And you to do kun. Who would be your best friends? I guess it would be Midoriya or Ada. And girl, I don't know, I'm almost never with you, right? Mina said with a laugh, but I'm enjoying this time with you. Me too. Mina said blushing after a few minutes the food arrived. Do you like? Todoroki asked. It's very tasty, but a little cold. Do not worry Shoto held Mina's plate and heated it with his fire. Thanks to do. You're welcome Ashi. Wait, how did you call me? Wonder Mina surprised. Sorry for. Don't apologize. I liked it a lot as you said. You can call me that, okay? Do you want more? I can ask for more if you want. I'm still hungry, so yes. Shoto ordered three more soba orders, of which they ate two and the last one was to eat in home. Can I ask you a question? It's okay if you don't want to answer, tell me. Have you always been? You know, pink. Well, my skin changed when my quirk appeared but I've always had black eyes and horns. It's something strange, but it's cute. How sweet you are to do kun. The waiter brought the bill at that time. Did we divide the money? Do not worry, I said I invited you. I will pay, are you sure to do kun? Yes do not worry Shoto took out his father's credit card and paid for the meal when they left the restaurant. The wind was blowing very hard. Shoto noticed how Mina was shaking a little from the cold. Take, Shoto said putting the jacket to the girl. Thanks to do, can I hold your hand again? Sure, left or right? Left. Now I'm cold, Mina said while holding it while they were walking. She was hitting Shoto more with the excuse of the cold, to the point that the bicolor ended up surrounding her with his arm, missing a few blocks to reach the bedroom. Mina hugged the bicolor. He did not bother the seam. We arrived, Shoto said as he opened the door, some of the girls have arrived. Mina said listening to the voices of her friends. You're right, it will sound stupid but I don't see Hagakir, he whispers. Sounds stupid, but I don't see her either, Mina said turning her head looking for her friend. But she didn't, today was amazing to do kun. I also enjoyed yourself with you Ashi at that moment Mina gave him a kiss on the cheek Shoto for his part. His face turned all red. Oh well, how cute surprisingly. Shoto also gave Mina a quick kiss on the cheek, which also blushed. How cute, Shoto said. Does this count as a date? Yes, it was the last thing Mina said before going to the elevator. Then it was my first date. Whispered to himself one sad afternoon, three of the girls in the class had decided to cook cupcakes for all their classmates. But they decorated them in a special way for each of them. They're ready, Momo said with a chef's hat, come for them. Hagakir said while she was holding the cupcake tray with baking gloves all or almost all the students grabbed their respective cupcake. Bakugus had a pomegranate decoration, Kirishima's was red with caramel spikes, Midoriya's was green, Kaminari's had a drawn ray, Jiru's was purple, Suyu's looked like a frog, Minta's had purple balls, Takoyami's was totally black, Mina was eating hers which was pink and had candy horns. When she realized that a cupcake had remained on the tray, it was one that had a red glaze and the other half was white, it was very evident from whom was. Todoroki did not grab his. Will he be in his room or will he have gone out and we keep it? Momo asked while eating her cake. I think he's in his room. He hasn't been out almost all day. Ada said eating his cake. I'll take it to him. Mina said grabbing the tray with the only cupcake left and headed for the elevator once she reached the floor that was the room. She walks to the door and knocked on it. Seconds later the bicolor opened. Hi Ashi, what's up? Asked the bicolor in a somewhat depressed tone. Hi to do, Mina said excitedly. We were making cupcakes and this one is for you. She said it with a big smile Shoto stared at the cupcake she brought. For me. Yes, I decorated it especially for you. Said the pink girl a little blushing and looking away the bicolor grabbed the cake and took a bite. Mina stared at him waiting for his reaction. It's very good. Thanks, he said with a small smile. T thanks to do she said blushing. Why are you here so alone? What do you mean? Well, you're always in the living room reading or something, but you're here alone and we're all down, is that, is that? Mina was staring at him. I think it would be better if you enter Mina nervously entered. She had already seen Todoroki's room when everyone made the competition of the rooms. But this was the first time she entered. She saw how Todoroki took what looked like a photograph that was inside a small box and gave it to her. 
Who is he? Nina asked while watching the picture. There were two children. One was evidently Shoto and the other was a boy with red hair and turquoise eyes. He's my older brother. Today is his birthday? Shoto said depressed. You were very cute. I mean, but, why are you sad? He, he, I don't know what happened to him. He said depressed and sitting on the edge of his bed. Why do you say that? Asked the pink girl sitting next to him. Almost ten years ago, his voice was beginning to cut. He and dad go out and he... He never came back Mina put her hands in her mouth and then hugged Shoto without thinking. I'm sorry to do. Thanks, he said while he hugged her back. I don't know why, but somehow I feel he is still alive. And is good. Todoroki surprisingly kissed her cheek and she blushed. And why was that? She asks nervous and totally red Shoto pointed to the apron she was wearing, which said kiss the chef they both stared at each other's eyes for a few seconds and they both blushed. Well, Mina was trying to break the silence. Would you like to go out? As sure, he said blushing. Where would you like to go? Let's go to the cinema, Mina said excitedly. After saying that, they both dressed a little better. They went to the movies. Once they got to the place they started to see what movies they were showing. Which do you want to see? Todoroki asked looking at the movies in the screen. Is there any terror? Nina asked excitedly. I think so. Are you sure you want to see one of terror? Why do you ask? I didn't know you liked that kind of movie. Don't you understand why? Thought the pink girl. Maybe it was an old trick to see that kind of movies. But Shoto really didn't understand he bought the tickets and came back with Mina. Are you hungry? A little bit. Mina couldn't even finish the sentence. Because Shoto went quickly and bought extra large popcorn and two drinks. You didn't have to. But I want to do it, said the bicolor smiling. Mina blushed and seized the moment and hugged Todoroki's left arm with the excuse that she was cold. When they reached the seats, which were conveniently in the back and in a corner, they sat down to enjoy the movie. Don't go back to the house, Todoroki whispered while watching the movie seconds later the girl in the movie loses her head. Uh, screamed Mina watching the scene. I told her, Shoto said taking his drink, but he was surprised to feel how Mina took his hand, turned to see her and felt scared. Shoto wanted to calm her down a bit and came up with an idea. If the whole class was in a horror movie, who do you think would survive? He whispered. Mina turned to see him a little surprised and confused. He almost never talked about random topics. Well, I think you and I, you're a rock. Hiri, Jiru. I think the girls would kill Minta and blame the killer. She said with a laugh. MMMMM, Midoriya, Suyu and Siro. And you, who do you think would survive? You and I, Ada, Yeyarazu, Bakugu. I think Hagakir would be the first to escape. Kaminari, Shoji, Suyu and Jiru. Awa, do you think I would survive? Mina asked blushing. Sure, you are amazing. It lasted a few seconds to realize what he said and blush, but not as much as Mina, which looked more red than pink. T thank you to do after leaving the cinema and returning to the bedrooms. Are they all asleep? Mina asked. I think so. Shoto said looking at his watch. It's 10.26p. I'm a bit late. Let's silence. If someone wakes up we are dead. Slowly opened the door both entered and walked very slowly. They avoided making the minimum possible noise when they noticed that the TV was on in a kitchen channel and on the sofa was Aizawa asleep with a notebook in his hands. Mina almost started laughing but Shoto covered her mouth and they both climbed into the elevator. We did it. H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A Mina fell to the floor laughing. I would never have imagined that the teacher, tears of laughter came out of her eyes. It was funny. Shoto a little laugh when they reached the floor of Mina's room. She left and Shoto followed her. What's going on? She asked confused Shoto gave her a little kiss on the cheek to which she blushed a lot. Today was a great day Mina. Thanks, he said smiling and about to return to the elevator but before he left Mina took his hand and he turned to see her. Would you like to? The words did not come to the pink girl mouth. What thing? Sleep with me tonight. She said quickly and totally red he also blushed upon hearing Mina's request. In your bed. Mina nodded. Are you sure? Mina nodded again. As sure. Both entered nervously. Took off their shoes and jackets. She told him to lie down first. Which Todoroki did and she was next. Snuggled into the space between his right arm and his body. She used his chest as a pillow. Good night to do. It was the last thing Mina said before falling asleep. Shoto stared at her for a few seconds and then covered her and himself with a blanket. Good night Ashi. It was the last thing he said before burying his face in Mina's hair and also falling asleep with the passage of time. The friendship between the pink girl and the two color boy had increased a lot. They already had a lot of confidence. Well, see for yourself. Monday. To do, can you help me? Mina asked in front of a somewhat tall shelf. Sure. What do you need? Well, I want those cookies. Mina said as she pointed to a jar of chocolate chip cookies that were on the shelf. But they are very high. Can you help me? Sure. Shoto without thinking Takito Mina's hips and lift her up so she could grab the cookie jar and then lower her. Thank you. Mina kissed his cheek. Do you want to go eat them with me in my room? Of course Mina took his hand and they both went to the elevator. However, they forgot that they were not alone in the place and almost all their friends saw the scene. Are they a couple? Jiru asked for watch the whole scene. No, Midoriya said, he saw the scene, so. 
What are they? None responded. They didn't know what to answer Tuesday. After a day of training given by Aizawa, almost everyone ended up exhausted and sweaty, and as if that wasn't enough, the heat was too strong. Almost everyone was placed under a small shadow. I need something cold, Kaminari said lying on the floor. Me too, Momo said creating a mini fan. Make me one of those, Yuraka said looking at her. How the fuck don't you have heat? Shout back Hugo to Todoroki everyone turned to see the bicolor that was under the strong sun. He wasn't even sweating. You're a curse phenomenon. Back Hugo yelled again. To do. Mina shouted as she ran to the bicolor and hugged him on his right side everyone looked at the scene again. A few seconds ago Mina was on the floor completely exhausted and very hot. In a few seconds she changed all that and went to hug the bicolor. At first everyone thought it was because of Shoto's cold. But it seemed that Mina was recharging her energy. Are you sure they are not a couple? Jiru asked again, they don't. Wednesday. On the night Jiru come from the elevator ready to eat something. It was when she saw that the TV was on and managed to distinguish a figure lying on the sofa. Carefully approached and noticed that it was the bicolor that was almost asleep. But in a false step that gave, made noise and Shoto turned to see her. What are you doing Jiru? Shoto asked while yawning. I'm hungry, what were you seeing? We were watching a movie. You and who else? Shoto lifted the blanket that covered him, which revealed that Mina was sleeping while hugging him. Don't make noise. She will get angry if you wake her up. Jiru was the same or more confused than the previous days. Still went to the fridge and grabbed an apple. Are they really not a couple? Jiru said on the verge of madness. No, they are not. Hagakir said she was totally naked. What are you doing here? Thursday. Everyone had agreed to reserve the pool for a whole day. Brought food, refreshments and music. Cannonball. Kaminari scream about to jump into the pool. Do a spin. Greedo Siro. Do not do it. Jiru yelled and then turned to his right. What the hell? Jiru watched as Shoto put sunscreen on Mina's back. Your hands are cold to do said the pinky between laughs everyone looked at the scene just as confused. But they didn't care. It was when minutes later, Shoto entered the pool with Mina on his shoulders as they played to tear down the others. Are they really not? I do not know anymore. Friday. They all made a date after leaving school to celebrate the beginning of the weekend. They decided to go to eat. Pass me the spoon, Kaminari said. We're eating stupid pizza. Bakugo told him totally confused by the stupidity that the electric quirk boy said, Pass me the cheese too. Jiru couldn't finish the sentence she turned to see how Shoto and Mina were sharing a milkshake. They both drank with two straws of the same glass while looking into each other's eyes and blushing. Are they really? I have no idea Sarai. Almost everyone was having breakfast at the table together. This toast is burned, Kirishima said claiming the chef. Who did it? I did it. Shout back Hugo. With burned I mean delicious, Kirishima again bite the bread everyone laughed after what happened. But they were surprised to see the next. Shoto and Mina leaving the elevator at the same time. Both totally disheveled and Mina wearing one of Shoto's shirts. Are they? I think they are Sunday. They have to be a couple. Jiru shouted to all her friends gathered on the first floor while she had a blackboard behind her with photos of Shoto and Mina with arrows pointing at various notes. I think you're obsessing a lot. Momo said watching Jiru this one seemed not to have slept in days after having done this scheme. I need to know if they are a couple or not. Why don't you go and ask them and that's it. Suyu said while watching her purple-haired friend who had clearly gone crazy Jiru without thinking went to Mina's room and started knocking on the door. Oh, hello Jiru, what's up? Mina asked as she opened the door they both entered. Jiru without surprise. She already knew that Todoroki was there, asleep in Mina's bed. Mina, I need to make you a question. What would it be? Are you two a couple? No, Mina shook her head in denial. Why do you ask? Jiru pointed to the bicolor asleep in bed. What? I've slept in his room too Jiru was going to blow her head. This makes no sense, if it doesn't bother you, Mina said snuggling next to the bicolor. Can you go out? I'm sort of tired. As sure as soon as she left, she could hear how Mina put lock to the door. Jiru shouted in madness for not knowing what was happening between them. While everyone in the class already assumed that Shoto and Mina were a couple, but did not want to admit it, the truth is that even they did not know what to call their relationship, best friends, friends with benefits. They had no idea with everything they've done. There was only one thing they didn't, which seemed incredible they hadn't kissed. And it was not because they did not want to, it was that both feared that, if they did it and the other did not want, they would ruin what they had they were both watching a movie in Mina's room. They decided that after they both fell asleep on the couch and their friends took pictures of them while they slept, it would be better if they had one just for them. Mina was completely snuggled on top of the bicolor while he was just playing with her hair while watching the movie. At a certain point Shoto began to be curious about Mina's horns, carefully caressing them and restraining them, which made Mina feel a chill. W why did you do that? Mina asked completely flushed. 
I was curious. I wanted to know what would happen if I touched them. Do not touch them. They are sensitive. Mina turned to look him in the eyes. I'm sorry. He stared at the yellow eyes that Mina had. She looked at the two color eyes that he had we should kiss to break the tension Mina thought as she slowly approached her face to Shoto's Shoto watched as the pink's face approached. He slowly approached so that their lips met in a kiss it was when the next room was heard as a window was broken and they avoided kissing, leaving them face to face totally flushed. Shit, what now? They both thought. They no longer knew what to do. They started to see what was left of the film, but totally uncomfortable and flushed some days later. Mina bought a package of long sweets to share with someone. There was no doubt who she was going to share it with. The girls knew Mina's intentions perfectly. It was the oldest trick in the world. Let's see if the bicolor could understand it too. Taduo. The pink girl screamed as she ran towards the boy who was sitting on the couch. What's up Ashy? She blushed every time he called her that. Although she was redder than a tomato, she approached him with the package of sweets. Do you want to share them with me? Asked the pink while sitting next to him. Sure he believed that she was going to give him one like any normal person. But he was surprised and blushed when he saw that she put an end of the candy in her mouth waiting for him to bite the other half, which she did. They both looked at each other as they slowly bit each end of the sweet as they got closer and closer to the center. But both being so nervously close, Todoroki did not realize that he bit the sweet very hard making his end fall. Again both were ridiculously close to kissing, and this time he ruined it days after. They were in Shoto's room playing cards, when suddenly the light bulb in the room burned out, leaving them totally in the dark. Damn, do not worry to do. I am sure that there must be some backrest. Mina got up and went, not before hitting her little finger on the table. It is worth mentioning that she was not wearing shoes he was just waiting for her. Not in the dark since he put his hand on fire to see a little. After a few minutes Mina returned with the new light bulb. Help me upload Shota. I'll put it Shoto grabbed her by the hips and pulled her up to change the light bulb. However when she did, this one caught on the spot. Because none of them turned the switch off. Not to mention that the light bulb was brighter than the previous one. Causing Mina to it blinded for a moment and moving so much that Shoto lost his balance. And they both fell to the ground when he raised his head he was inches from his lips. When she bowed her head, one of her horns lightly hit Todoroki's forehead. Sorry to do, do not worry, said the two color while kissing her on the head and helping her to help her up. And they continued playing. That same night. Mina was frustrated in her room hitting the wall. It seemed that kissing was more difficult than she thought. After a few seconds of being so scandal someone knocked on her door and she opened it. What? She shouted to the person who opened. I better go. Not to do. Wait. I want to talk to you. Okay, but? Why were you hitting the walls? I was a little frustrated. Why? Asked the bicolor bowing his head Todoroki really didn't understand anything. Because I wanted to kiss you and every time I try something ruins it. She finally said it, but in an altered tone. Forgive me for yelling at you to do, it's just that. She could not finish because he was the one who kissed her. For the first time Mina felt Shoto's lips. It seemed a dream, they were cold and warm at the same time. She did not resist and surrounded him with her arms around his neck. After a few seconds they separated to be able to breathe, that was. As I always imagined Mina hadn't released him, and she wasn't going to release him. Can I do it again? Shoto asked with regret. As many times as you want. Mina whispered in a seductive tone as they both entered and she locked the door after a few days of what happened. They had officially become couple. They no longer had to hide what they felt for each other. They slept together every night. At school they were always together, even in training. Cho, what's going on? Mina did not say a word. Just gave him a hug and both fell on the couch. I missed you too, Shoto said returning the hug. You were separated two hours, shouted Bakugo who was on the same couch only two hours. Mina had gone with the girls, but she was already so used to being with Shoto and missed him being so long without him. Go to a hotel, scream Hagakir joking from a chair Mina blushed at such a comment, but Shoto seemed not to have understood. Why would we go to a hotel? Our rooms are upstairs Mina blushed more and hide her face in Shoto's neck. They don't mean that, Mina whispered in his ear despite being dating. Shoto still didn't understand some things or double sense jokes after a slightly uncomfortable dinner among all their friends. They went to Mina's room, where there was an unusual silence from Mina. Are you okay Mina? Why you ask? You are very quiet. And that is not normal, it's just that. Just that. Shoto looked at her confused. Did I do something wrong? It's not that Shoto, it's that what you said below gave a wrong idea. About the room. But it's true, why would we go to a hotel? Because they think that we spend fucking. Shouted Mina with a completely red face and putting a pillow on her face. But we have never. I know. Mina commented with the pillow on her face and lying on the bed. But they don't Shoto slowly lay down next to her. You want to? Mina was surprised by such a question and took off her pillow. Why yes, of course. But we are still minors show. That's true. But maybe we could do something that comes closer. Mina looked at him confused. It was when Shoto sat on the edge of the bed and sat her on his lap which blushed both of them. W what are you doing? Asked the pink girl. 
Almost red while looking him in the eyes Shoto just gave him a smile and started gently kissing her neck. Mina totally surprised the only thing she could do was close her eyes and let herself be carried away by the kisses of the two color boy while she only stroked his hair and tried not to moan. Shoto was only focused on kissing Mina as he gently stroked her back. But at one point he stopped. Why are you stopping? I didn't know if you were liking it so better. Not. If you put me down I will attack you. W.Y. This is the most beautiful thing you have done for me. The pink girl was saying breathing rapidly. And I don't want you to stop Shoto gave her another smile and kissed her neck again while she only enjoyed each of the kisses. Sho, I want to mark you as mine. What are you? Without thinking, Mina made a hickey on the right side of his neck. Now everyone will know that you are mine, Mina said with a big smile. Shoto was not far behind and made him one on the left side. Now you are mine Mina only smiled at him to tell him, I always will be, was what Mina said before jumping on him to kiss him the next day. Mina woke up to Shoto who was shirtless and kiss marks all over his body. He was like this since she took it from him by force Mina started kissing his chest and neck as she repeated, wake up, wake up, wake up after a few seconds Shoto woke up. Good morning Mina, Shoto said while yawning and kissing her head. Do you want us to have a date? Mina asked with a smile on her face. I would like to, but today I can't Mina. Why? The answer made Mina a little sad. I'm going with the boys to have lunch in the center. Oh I see. Do not worry, I have your mark, Shoto said smiling and pointing to her neck and then kissing Mina on the lips, and I yours after they both had breakfast and a shower, they spent a while playing cards until Shoto's time to go with the boys. Do I bring you something? To you, eat fast and come back. I'll try, Shoto said about to leave. Wait, leave me your hoodie, you know, to remind you Shoto at first was going to refuse because Mina already had almost all his hoodies, but she gave him a look that he could not refuse so he put it on gave her a goodbye kiss on the lips and went out with the boys from the bedrooms as the hours passed. Mina was eating a pizza they had ordered with the girls. Everything went smoothly until... Mina, what's on your neck? Asked Hagakure who had a piece of pizza in hand, and nothing. Is it a hick? Nothing. They all laughed after that. As the boys did not return yet they started watching television for a while. There was nothing interesting so they only went through the channels, until... Wait, take it back to the news Tsuyu returned the TV to the channel, where it was seen. A big building in the center totally destroyed. Rubble everywhere, ice on some supports, fire on others, many injured. I know that building, Momo said shocked. That's where a lot of the information about the city and about the different active, inactive and deceased heroes is kept. Let us listen to know what happened. They all fell silent and turned up the volume on the television to listen to the reporter. An attack by a group of powerful villains and some professional heroes and aspiring student heroes ended with a completely destroyed information building. According to witnesses the building began to gradually collapse and then began to disintegrate without a trace they all remained with their eyes open upon hearing that. Luckily the villains were arrested. But some of the heroes and students had to be transferred to the central hospital. More information. So you turned off the TV and everyone started getting dressed to go out. But Aizawa stopped them. I will go for them. You stay here. Do not leave until I return. Aizawa said about to leave. But, no buts. Don't go out until I get back. They all nodded in resignation and Aizawa left. Everyone in the dorms worried about them. Do you think they are okay? Said Jiru playing worried with her headphones. Of course. All the others said. You know what, said Sato taking some ingredients, let's make them a dinner for them for their recovery. Good idea. Everyone helped, even if they didn't know how to cook. They took ingredients and did the best they could. Are you seriously cooking soba for him? Suyu asked to see what Mina was preparing. He loves soba, the pink girl said with a smile on her face. After the minutes had passed, they had all the dinner prepared. It was when Aizawa arrived with the boys shortly after and opened the door and everyone entered and they stood in front of the door with all the food they had prepared. But, the boys looked down and looked too depressed and surprised. Aizawa was the same, we did this to make you feel better. Momo said taking a step forward they did not move. They did not even speak. It was when a certain person stepped forward and they looked at her. Where's Shoto? Mina asked with a bowl of soba in her hands and looking at all the boys asking about her boyfriend everyone turned to see her with sad eyes she was already worrying. Kirishima, where's Shoto? Kirishima just looked down, which worried Mina the most. Midoriya, where's Shoto? Mina's voice was already starting to get a little altered. Midoriya looked down and tears fell from his eyes. Kaminari, where's Shoto? Mina was already totally upset Kaminari just turned his gaze. Bakugo, his body was not found. Bakugo screamed with tears in his eyes everyone opened their eyes and covered their mouths Mina dropped the bowl which broke. W what D did you say? Mina's voice had broken after hearing that and the tears began to flow from her eyes and her knees began to tremble. 
Todoroki's body was not found in the rubble. Aizawa said with a broken voice and looking down they all had glassy eyes. Mina was static. Mina. Hagakir tried to approach her but as soon as she heard her name, she ran to her room. Upon arrival she closed the lock the door. She lay in her bed where she could no longer contain the tears and began to cry with all her strength while hugging the hoodie Shoto gave her before to go. It's not true. She whispered to herself while crying a lot and you're not dead Shoto but after one month. There was no sign of Shoto or his body one month later. Everyone's hopes of finding Shoto or at least his body had started to wane. But they kept searching. Even if it was the last thing they did. Aizawa decided not to teach until he found his student after another day of searching. Aizawa met his students on the first floor. Nothing yet. Midoriya asked who was sitting on the sofa drinking tea. Nothing, Aizawa said looking down. Not even a clue. So you ask sad. Not even that everyone present lowered their heads. How is Ashido? Asked Aizawa. He knew that she was the most affected. She has not left her room since the news of her boyfriend's disappearance. Mina did not leave her room except to go to the bathroom. She only went when everyone was asleep. They always left her food outside her room. But she hardly ever touched her and if she did she ate very little. Can you go get her? We will try all the girls went to the pink girl's room and knocked on the door. Mina. There was no answer and they played again. It's us. Can you go out? There was no answer yet, since they were beginning to worry. Then they saw that the lunch they had brought her hours ago was still almost intact. The only thing missing was the cutlery and the soda they opened the door without hesitation. Everything was dark. Mina, Suyu touched the switch which turned on the light letting see. A totally messy room, dirty clothes on the floor stacked in a corner, food scraps all over the carpet, and in the bed they could see that Mina was under the blankets. I did not tell you that you could enter. Mina said under the blankets in a very weak tone. Go out. We want to see how you are, Mina, we haven't seen you in weeks, mentioned Hagakir sitting on the edge of the bed. And Shoto, Mina asked with a broken tone of voice, we still don't know anything about him, Momo said in a sad tone a faint cry was heard coming from under the blanket. You don't get like this, I'm sure he's fine Mina didn't answer, she just snuggled closer in the corner of her bed and covered herself more with the blanket, I I want to be alone. Please go out they all looked at her worried, she was really depressed, tell us what you want and we will bring it to you, Momo said, whatever she asked she would do with her quirk, I want Shoto here with me, screamed Mina raising her face from between the sheets, her eyes were puffy, maybe from crying a lot, her hair that was short and reached a little above her shoulders, was now longer and reached her elbows, but Hit was a mess for not combing it in a long time, he is the only thing I want they had never seen Mina in this way, really that Shoto's disappearance had affected her, sadness could be seen in the pink girl's eyes, they considered Mina as a sister and would not leave her alone, so between they all hugged her, we will not leave you alone Mina, said Yuraka hugging her, we know you miss Todoroki a lot, so you said hugging her too, we all miss him, Momo said hugging her too. We will do everything to find him, thank you girls, forgive me for yelling at you. Mina said softly and hugging her friends between all of them they fixed her a little and without her seeing Momo grabbed the whole pile of clothes, which were Shoto's hoodies, jackets and shirts, and lowered them to wash them. The rest of the girls combed her long hair that now had. They changed her clothes and put clothes on her that were hers, since the one she was wearing was from Shoto. Do you want to come downstairs? We will order pizza and watch a movie. Mina was left wondering. She didn't know if she wanted her friends to see her with her new look, but she knew that the girls really wanted her. Al alright the girls took her downstairs, where everyone was surprised by the long hair she now had. She did not say a word and sat on the couch surrounded by Hagakir and Tsuyu. After a few minutes Aizawa came to the room and saw the pink one. He was glad to see that she was fine, but he knew that she was still depressed. Her gaze gave her away when the pizzas arrived about 29 minutes after they ordered them. None of them contained pineapple, which made Mina a little happy. But even so she did not feel like eating much. She was no longer so sure if she would stay to watch the movie with the rest but before they put the movie. Hey, what's that? Asked Ada who was looking out the window. Everyone went to the window to see what a lot of smoke looked like in the sky. Although it was too far from the bedrooms, it was too much smoke. What's going on? Everyone was still watching the smoke, except Mina who was looking at the TV which was turned off, put the news on now. Aizawa said quickly going back into the room Mina slowly grabbed the control and turned on the TV on the news channel. Everyone circled the screen to see. A villain above a burning gas station attacking various heroes. The villain had black hair and a pointy style and attacked the heroes and police who approached him with fire. Who? They were wondering who is that villain everyone fell silent so they could listen to the reporter. This villain is not known the identity, but... The reporter stopped for a moment to listen to her microphone and then speak. I am being informed that at this moment a great leak is taking place in Tartarus. They all opened their eyes wide Tartarus. The prison of the most dangerous villains was under attack and some were escaping. We are informed that the villains attacking the prison are Toga Himiko, Shigaraki Tamura, Twice and Spinner. All members of the League of Villains and their leader. It is not a coincidence that these two attacks happened at the same time. 
This was planned. Aizawa mentioned listening to everything, but, who is this guy from the gas station? Everyone was looking in detail at the subject on the roof of the gas station, but they opened their eyes much more, because the unknown subject began to generate ice with his right leg and arm, freezing all the policemen. But not killing them Mina opened her eyes like never before and brought her face closer to the TV with tears in her eyes. As Shoto, one month ago, the day of the accident, the boys heard the rumblings that came from the building and without hesitation they went to help. They did not have their costumes with them because they did not think that they would need them. When they arrived they saw that there were various heroes fighting the villains. They informed them that there were still people inside and the building was falling down due to having damaged structures. They decided that Bakugo and Todoroki were the right ones to remove the people because if they used their powers they could damage the structures more and the building would fall faster once inside the building. They evacuated people floor by floor, but by the time they reached the top floor, the building was already collapsing and debris was falling from the ceiling. Bakugo and Shoto were evacuating people with the help of Siro who used his tapes to get to the 15th floor window where they were helping people and Siro was putting them safe. Someone else is here. Bakugo shouted which was closer to the window. No, then come back here idiot. Shoto was on the other side of the floor because he was checking that no one else was in the place and he ran back. But halfway, a large crack opened in the middle of the building leaving Shoto on one side and Bakugo on the other. Shit, Bakugo shouted going to the edge of the crack. Jump and I catch you. Bakugo shouted extending his hand Shoto knew that if some of them used their powers could throw down the building and both would die. Shoto walked back a little to gain momentum and then jumped the crack. But before he could grab Bakugo's hand, a metal rubble hit Shoto square in the head, causing him to fall into the void leaving Bakugo in shock. Bakugo get out of there, shout Siro who had just returned to the window and desperately yelled at his friend to come back Bakugo was still not reacting to what had just happened. Siro had to use his tape to grab the blonde and get him out. Where is T-O-D-O-R-O-K-I? They all asked when they didn't see their friend. Bakugo only pointed at the building which was already starting to fall. Everyone wanted to enter to find their friend, but the building had already fallen leaving everyone frozen but seconds before it fell, inside the building. Shoto's body had fallen to the top floor where a person who was hidden found him and dragged him. Tamura, I have the information, the person said speaking on a communicator, and I have a guest with me. Get me out of here now after saying that. A black and purple cloud appeared and the person grabbed Shoto and quickly entered, disappearing with the body before the entire building collapsed on them. In an unknown location, the person came out of the smoke with Shoto on the floor. They were in a bar surrounded by a gray-haired man with a hand to his face, a lizard man, a man with a magician's hat and mask, a man who had a black and purple cloud body, and a blonde girl who was the one who brought Shoto, look what I found, Toga said smiling. Can we keep him? Compress, spinner, tie him to the chair they both obeyed the leader and tied Shoto to the chair with chains. But waiting his awakening while they waited they decided to drink something while Shigaraki reviewed the information that Toga had collected. I also want to have a drink Tamura, claimed Toga, you are a minor. There you put the limit of the law. While everyone was chatting, Shoto was waking up little by little and they were staring at him, you are finally awake. Shigaraki said in his normal tone of voice while looking at Shoto, Shoto managed to fully wake up and saw that everyone in the room was staring at him, he had no idea what was happening. What's going on? Who are you? Everyone stared at him with more confusion. Don't you remember us? Shigaraki asked getting up from the chair. No, Shoto was having a horrible headache at the time. Who am I? Everyone looked with more confusion and looked at each other. What did you just say? Who am I? Shoto tried to stay awake, but his head hurt too much and he passed out again. Everyone saw Shigaraki again. He doesn't remember anything about us. Toga, what did you do to him? I didn't do anything to him. He fell in front of me in the building and I brought him here. Master, Shigaraki said while looking at the screen of a TV that was in the bar. Did you see everything? After a few minutes of conversation between Shigaraki, OFA and the OFA doctor, the latter came to the conclusion after listening to what Shoto said and what Toga said of how she found him, a conclusion was reached. Amnesia, all the surprised members said, except Toga. What is that? Asked the blonde confused while playing with Shoto's hair which was still passed out. If what the doctor says is true, this brat doesn't remember anything or anyone, Shigaraki said while smiling. We have to take advantage of this. What do you mean? Release him, Shigaraki said, to which his allies obeyed. Let's convince him that he is a member of the League of Villains. Think about it, this is an opportunity that we cannot miss. All the members looked at each other. All agreed and left Shoto on the sofa, however, Toga did not stop playing with his hair after about 45 minutes Shoto woke up again. You are awake, Shigaraki said while offering him a glass of water. You must be thirsty Shoto with some hesitation took the glass and drank it. T thank you, W who are you? Shoto still had a headache and was holding his head. 
Don't you remember us? We are your friends, Toga said smiling and with her face very close to Shoto's. Friends, Shigaraki knew that it was the right time to give him false memories of everything. That he was a villain, that he had joined the League. And they told him about basic things about him. Having a lot of information about him. They used it in his favor. He also said that he suffered a blow to the head for running away with Toga in his last mission and for that reason he did not remember anything. Shoto believed everything. Everything fit together perfectly. Let's see if I say it right this time. Shoto pointed at each member in the room. You are Shigaraki. You are Toga. You are Twice. You are Spinner and you Mr. Compress. Good. Toga hug him. And what is my name? I don't even remember that. It's SHSH. Shire. Shire. Shoto asked. Yes, it's your villain name. That's how we tell you. Shigaraki said confidently. What a funny name. Shoto gave a little laugh. Everyone smiled. They have him. Shoto was with Shigaraki who was giving him information from UA students. But Shoto was still curious about himself. Boss, how did this scar happen to me? Shoto asked, touching his scar which he could see with the reflection of one of the glasses. Oh that, this. Shigaraki looked among the papers which could convince of having made the scar and gave it to Shoto. This person did it. Mina Ashido. Yes, she made that scar with her acid. Luckily it wasn't that serious Shoto began to feel hatred for the pink girl, along with the other students. Don't worry about it, Toga said arriving with Magni, Shire, she is our sister Magni. Oh hi, we came to do you a makeover Shigaraki and the others saw Toga confused. But the two girls took Shoto to the bathroom. Once there they put hair dye in a bowl of water and mixed it. First, your hair. What's wrong with it? I do not want to offend you. But it is ridiculous, red, white, just choose a color and that color will be black. They put a towel around Shoto's neck and started putting the dye all over his hair, which was slowly darkening. After 20 minutes, Shoto's hair had turned completely black. That color suits you, Magni said smiling. When it dries we will comb it differently. They waited for it to dry and Toga grabbed some gel and ran it over Shoto's head making him have a pointy and sideways style. What do you think? Asked the psychotic blonde giving her a mirror Shoto grabbed it and looked at himself. I like it. You're very good at this Toga hugged him and smiled at him. There is still another member you don't know. But he hardly ever comes to the den. When he comes tell him what you told me. Oh, fine. What's his name? Is Toga Shire. I tell you later. Let's go before Tamura disintegrates another of his hands. And believe me, it's worse than it sounds. They both went and everyone was amazed at Shoto's new look. But there was still something to fix. His scar. Toga grabbed some makeup from her room and Magni from her bag. It wasn't just any makeup. It was makeup resistant to various attacks, which included fire, sweat and water. It was created for the villains and heroines who at the time of fighting did not want it to dissolve or harm. They carefully passed the makeup and managed to completely cover the scar. How's your sight, Shire? Honesty is good, why? This is for you. Shigaraki gave him a pair of contact lenses, which Shoto put on. Well, much better. Thanks boss those weren't just any contact lenses, although they helped Shoto's eyesight, hiding the grey and turquoise eyes he had for yellow ones. Black hair, scarless, yellow eyes and a hatred for UA students, what everyone knew as Shoto Todoroki. No longer existed they made a dinner with pizza without pineapple to celebrate the arrival of their new member. After finishing eating, everyone returned to their rooms or apartments. And where do I sleep? Shire asked. With me. Toga scream excited. In fact, Toga we have a room for him. Hirajiri couldn't finish because Toga took Shoto to her room which had a lot of knives stuck to the walls. Stuffed animals everywhere. Dirty clothes on the floor and an essence of madness in the air. Why do I feel like she's going to rape me? Shoto thought as he entered the room once inside Toga changed her suit for a shorts and a sleeping shirt and hid under the sheets and grabbed Shoto's hand and forced him to lie with her. She could feel him trembling. You are nervous. How cute. Don't worry, I don't bite. Toga smiled showing his teeth. She just laid her head on Shoto's neck and quickly fell asleep. Shoto just hugged her. For some reason he felt like he was cheating on someone over the weeks. They had prepared an attack to free several of their members from the Tartarus prison. But they occupied Shoto. He was training his powers with several of the members in the mountains, which they reached thanks to Kurajiri on the day of the attack. Shoto was given his villain suit, which was a black fire-resistant and at the same time waterproof jacket, black pants that resisted low temperatures, and black boots. You will be the distraction, Shire. You just have to distract the largest number of police and heroes while we free our members. When we succeed we will notify you by the communicator and you will escape to the escape location Shoto nodded and went to change the suit. After that the other members got into a van and left Shoto at the train station. Took one and came to the gas station during his journey he managed to see several heroes on his way. A blonde with purple horns next to a tree. I am Groot. Shoto muttered mocking the hero he managed to see a heroine whose costume left little to the imagination. 
which made him blush, exhibitionist bitch while walking he collided with some people, sorry, I didn't see, said the redhead girl, Kendo, you know you did it on purpose, said a blonde guy with a laugh Shoto recognized them from the photos Shigaraki had shown him, Kendo and Monoma, but apparently they did not recognize him, Shoto did not answer them and continued on his way to the gas station. Once inside the store he sent a message to Shigaraki, seconds later the answer came to him to attack. Let's begin after saying this he left the store and threw fire at the fuel tanks which exploded and generated large amounts of fire and smoke around him. The heroes who managed to see that he was responsible went to attack him, but he responded by throwing fire at them and they only covered themselves because they were heroes of attacking at close range. He knew that staying on the ground was a bad idea, so he used the cars that had exploded near the area to go up to the roof of the gas station and continue attacking while with the other members. They were hiding among the trees near Tartarus listening to the radio from the van and smiling. Shire is attacking, but he will not resist much alone. Come on now they all got out of the truck and Toga quickly stabbed the guards who patrolled in the neck and sucked the blood of one while twice took the measurements from the other and towards a clone. Then Shigaraki disintegrated the corpses not without first taking the identifications the false policemen managed to open the door for them. It was at that moment that Toga stabbed them and the entire league entered killing each guard and hero that was inside Tartarus. There are not so many heroes as they were on their way to face Shoto. They managed to find one of the members and Shigaraki disintegrated the bars. Gas brat ready, where's the blonde? Mustard guided them to muscular and they broke their cell and the machines that compressed him. It was about time. I was starting to get bored here, he said creating various muscular tissues around his arms they were missing a member to release. But, Shigaraki, the plan failed. They know that we are attacking the prison and more than 45 heroes are coming here. We have to get out now, Kirijiri said appearing in front of them. But, what about Shire? We will not leave him behind. The blonde exclaimed, quiet crazy. He will not be captured they all entered Kirijiri and disappeared from prison while with Shoto, he kept attacking with fire and ice anyone who came near him, waiting for the signal to retreat. In the dorms, Mina stared with tears at the screen directly. As Shoto, the tears that came out of her eyes were a mix between happiness and sadness. What are you doing? Asked Mina covering her mouth with her hands the person she most loved was alive. But he was attacking what he was supposed to be and was helping people who tried to kill her and her friends. This must be a mistake. I know him. He would never do this Mina thought without being able to believe what she was seeing. Everyone saw with amazement what was happening after continuing to watch the attack. Shoto had disappeared into the smoke everyone was still in the room shocked by what they had just seen. W was he? Asked Momo. He did not look like Todoroki. I have to find him, Mina whispered. Unfortunately everyone heard her. She without thinking went to the door, but was stopped by one of Aizawa's bandages. P please, I need to know that. No one is going to leave. Aizawa said in a serious tone. Go to your rooms now and don't leave. See you tomorrow. It was the last thing Aizawa said before leaving the door. Everyone went to their bedrooms seconds later. But Mina stayed at the door without move. Mina, we have to go too. I don't want to be alone Hagakure. Mina hugged the invisible girl. Seconds later all the girls hugged her. You don't have to be. We will have a sleepover in my room. Momo said smiling. We will eat something. We will see a movie. Whatever you want Mina gave a small smile and went with the girls to the room with Shire. He was running between alleys. Going to the escape location which was to the south. Where are you? Asked the now dark haired man for his communicator. Relax. Kirijiri will appear behind the workshop that is two blocks ahead. Shigaraki answering by the communicator. I miss you. Toga screamed. Shut up brat. Anyway, don't stop Shire kept running. But before he came he found a hero. So you were the one who caused the explosion at the gas station? Said the hero in combat position, a simple brat. Shire did not reply. His personality had not changed and he was only looking at the hero. Who had large red wings and blonde hair. Give up. You have nowhere to go he managed to see how behind him the purple and black cloud was forming which was his escape route. Unfortunately the hero turned to see and his plan was ruined. I see, so you're a member of. It was not even three seconds before he froze his entire body except his face and took advantage of those few seconds and entered the portal disappearing in front of the hero hawks. Shit, shouted the frozen blonde once in the den. Everyone saw the black hair boy come out of the portal and smiled. You did very well, Shigaraki commented smiling. They all patted the black haired man's back. It was when he saw the two members who rescued and shook their hands in greeting. Have I seen you before? Muscular tried to remember it. I don't know, my memories are not very good Shigaraki took advantage and explained to the two newcomers the situation of the new member of the league. After that as all groups celebrated the victory with alcohol, Shire was not so interested in drinking and went to the rooftop from there he could see much of the city. He liked the silence that was at that time, it was when someone opened the door and he turned. Why are you here so lonely? 
There is a lot of noise downstairs. I like the silence. It's better Toga the blonde just walked up to him and laid her head on his shoulder. It's very comfortable out here. Mentioned Toga smiling. It is he turned his gaze towards her who had a stronger blush than normal and smiled at her. He only looked at the yellow eyes that she has. That color of eyes reminded him of something or someone, no matter how hard he tried. He did not remember. It was when Toga approached her face slowly and he did it too. They were a few centimeters away from their lips touching. It was when Shigaraki opened the door surprising them and causing them to separate. I'm sorry to interrupt whatever you were doing, but dinner is ready. Both fully blushed went to eat. After finishing, Toga took him to her room, even though he had his own room. She did not let him sleep there, closed the door and laid him on the bed sitting on his lap and she removed the yellow contact lenses. Better this way he smiled slightly, but was surprised to feel Toga's lips against his. He did not know what to do since she put her arms around his neck. He had no escape, on the roof he had his doubts. But at that moment he could confirm it. He did not know why. But he knew he was cheating on someone. He could not take it anymore and he separated from Toga falling on the bed and leaving Toga surprised. What's going on? Are you gay Shire? What? Of course not. So, I feel like what we just did is not right. It felt good. Toga said as he snuggled into her neck. It felt good, but... I feel like I'm hurting someone Toga looked at him confused. She couldn't read her mind. But she knew something was affecting him. If you ever get your memory back, can we be together? He just gave her a smile and stroked her hair. Maybe Toga smiled and covered them both with one of her blankets and they both fell asleep with Mina. Mina was sleeping when she suddenly woke up breathing hard. She felt a pain in her heart. Something is not right carefully not to wake the girls. She left the room. Instead of going to her own, she went to Shoto's room where all his things were still intact from the last time he was there for a few minutes. She could not stop the tears from coming out of her eyes and lay down on his bed. It still smells like Shoto. Mina without hesitation hugged Shoto's pillow. I know you're a live show. I don't know why you're doing this, but please come back to me. The crying had started. I need you here with me the next day. Aizawa was in front of all the students, who were concerned about the situation. As they suspected, the attacks were coordinated. Two league members escaped from Tartarus, mustard and muscular just hearing that name. Midoriya felt a horrible chill. Was it Shoto? Desperate Mina asked. We do not know. Any DNA evidence that could have been in the gas station was destroyed. But the police and the heroes were involved in that attack and if they find them, they came to two decisions, try to capture them and send them to Tartarus or... Everyone stared in fear at what he was going to say. If it is impossible to capture them, they will not hesitate to eliminate them. Everyone opened their eyes upon hearing Aizawa's words. Without thinking they got up to protest, especially Mina with tears in her eyes. I do not agree either. But the decision has already been made, Aizawa said about to leave. Then we will have one too. Bakugo shouted, to which everyone saw him. If those stupid of the league attack again, let's be the first to stop them. Everyone turned to see him. With that everyone's hope returned and they smiled that same night they planned different plans and strategies in case the league attacked again. Each time they left they would do so grouped into teams that they themselves chose. And each day they would divide throughout the city to be prepared for any attack with the league. Shigaraki and Kurajiri were planning a next attack with the information previously collected and the recovered members of the prison. But this would be a different attack. They would attack a place that indirectly would affect not only the heroes, but the entire city, the central hospital. Without this place, the heroes who are injured will take longer to recover, which they would take advantage of to attack more and more places, and also more heroes. Everything is ready, where is everyone? The grey-haired man asked with the hand to his face to the purple and black portal, which took out a phone to contact the rest of the members. Muscular is training somewhere in the slums. Mustard is mixing chemicals to use with his gas. Twice is in the cinema with Spinner. Magni is buying clothes, compressing objects to use in the future. Dabai does not answer, but knowing him is burning people, and Toga and Shire are. With Shire and Toga, he would freeze people and thaw apart for Toga to take the necessary blood. Or all of the person, then they left the body in some alley or a hidden place and went on their way. It was already a routine for them. Why don't you kill anybody yet, Shire? It is fun. I don't know. I don't feel good doing it, but I like to help you. And you do it. It is more fun when the prey cannot move and the screams are very annoying and that you freeze the face is incredible. As a thank you I will teach you to stab a person's vital areas. No need Toga their relationship had changed a lot. It could be said that they had become best friends. They did everything together. They ate together. They went out together. To Toga's repeated demands they share a room while walking among the streets of the city in their costumes. They received a message from Shigaraki telling them to go to the den. After they had lunch they went to that place where almost all the members of the league were. Still not coming. Toga said looking everywhere looking for a certain member. No, but we do not need him this time. We will use Shire again. But this time we will be the distraction, Shigaraki said while giving some artifacts to the black-haired man. Shire, you will put these artifacts all over the hospital. 
and you will explode them, but be careful they are highly volatile. We create them from the sweat of a person. How disgusting, Toga said wanting to vomit. Several days later, all were scattered around the city. They were in six groups, five of three people and one was of four, which was in the center of the city, was made up of Mina, Kaminari, Jiru and Hagakir. They were walking while drinking a fruit smoothie. They were wearing normal clothes because underneath they were wearing their hero suits. We have been this way for several days now. We should try something else, Jiru said. Like what? What we are doing is waiting for them to attack. We should attack first at that time they received a call and everyone listened. Some members of the league were seen in the northern part of the city and all the groups came immediately. There were also some heroes who were going in that direction they were only making lures. They were copies that Twice had created. The originals were on a ceiling observing everything. While Shire walked among the people with a backpack full of explosive devices. Thanks to Toga her hair had changed color again it was now a peach shade and new purple contact lenses without his planning. He accidentally crossed with Mina's group and just got out of the way and continued towards the hospital, which was close but Mina stopped for a moment and turned her head, managed to feel something strange in one of the people they had just passed, something familiar, something like a sixth sense. As Shoto, once he arrived at the hospital, he tried to avoid the cameras and go to the basement as fast as possible. While walking he collided with a person, a girl with glasses and white hair. Sorry, I didn't see you Shire saw the girl and a little headache came and he held her. The girl managed to see that the backpack looked strange and helped Shire to get up and then left. What he did not see was that she called someone after he walked away from her. W what was that? He asked himself as he walked towards the stairs towards the basement. Once he arrived he began to take out the artifacts and put them carefully you could only see a lot of bright lights in the basement. He almost retired, but can I know what you're doing? He turned to see that behind him was Endeavor. Nice to meet you it turns out that the girl he collided with a few minutes ago was her sister Fayumi. She didn't know it was him, but she called her father for a possible attack on the hospital, which was the one where her mother was. Endeavor managed to recognize the voice, S-H, S-H-O-T-O. Shire grabbed one of the artifacts and put it in his left hand. Make a step and everyone in this place dies. What do you think you're doing? I don't think you're going to attack me. At the slightest contact with fire this place will explode to the skies Endeavor recognized Shoto's voice anywhere. Endeavor could seem like an idiot. And he is. But even he knew that his son would never endanger innocence, much less his mother damn league of villains. They corrupted him. Now get out of my way. If there is any hero accompanying you this place explodes Endeavor knew that this was and not his son, knew that he was serious and walked away from the stairs. Shire started walking backwards. Once he crossed the door he ran to the entrance but when he was about to activate the device, someone took it from him. What? He only saw how the device floated. It was Hagakir, G give up. He turned around and saw that Mina, Kaminari and Jiru were in a fighting position. He also positioned himself to fight. Mina had returned to follow him and they to her. It was a good decision as soon as he saw Mina. He got a worse headache again and held it down. What is he doing? Kaminari asked. Confused Shire repositioned himself to fight. Give me back that everyone opened their eyes to hear his voice. He is Shoto. Mina said looking at him askance. She was happy but confused. Why are you doing this? Mina is not the time to question him. Where are the others? Asked Hagakir who was holding the device. Yamomo group is 15 minutes away and is the closest everyone turned to see Shire. D does this mean that we have to face Shoto? Mina said nervously the four were ready to face Shire. They positioned themselves as a square so that he had no escape. Ask Shoto don't do it, please. Without hesitation the first one who attacked was Kaminari. Thanks to the stealth movements that Toga had taught him. He managed to approach him so quickly that they did not have time to react. He took him by the neck and began to suffocate him and then frozen him. Denki. Jiru without hesitation attacked Shire with her earphones, but had to back off due to the fire that he threw at her. Shit. Hagakir run and take that thing with you. Jiru pointed to the device that had recently been taken from him. The invisible girl started running towards the closest group. Shire when noticing that the detonating device had disappeared, began to burn with rage, which hurt Kaminari who slowly lost consciousness. I shouldn't have been in this chapter, Kaminari said before passing out from the lack of air. Shut. It all depends on us Mina with Hagakure. She kept running towards the direction of Momo's group. It took her several minutes until she met them. The group were Momo, Shoji and Aoyama. What is this? Shoji asked looking at the device. We took it from Todoroki. Everyone opened their eyes to hear that. He is alive, but it seems that he is with the League. And your group? I asked the French. They are facing him. We have to hurry. Momo shouted as everyone ran towards the place. They can't hold on much time back in the fight. Both girls found it very difficult to get close to Shire due to the fire and ice that this was throwing at them. Mina found it easy to handle the ice because she can easily melt it with her acid. But the fire was complicated for both of them, not to mention that Kaminari was still passed out. Hold on, we are three blocks away. Scream Hagakure on the communicator. Did you hear men? 
Jiru couldn't finish because as with Kaminari, Shire took advantage of that little distraction time to kick her in the neck, knocking her unconscious, which left Mina in shock. Shire pointed his left arm at her, but just by looking at her, make his head hurt and back off, Mina did not understand what was happening. But she knew that she had to attack him, even if she did not want to. She quickly approached him and tried to kick him in the abdomen. But he held her leg and threw her hard on the ground and tried to freeze her. But she got up quickly and melted the ice. Shire, do you hear me? Toga said through the communicator that was on Shire's left arm, which was blinking with a red light Mina managed to react. If he said anything, the League would come to support him. Without hesitation she grabbed him by the wrists and released acid, enough to harm it. But not him, why if you move, I'll melt your hands. Let me go or ill broke your arms they were both hesitant to harm the other. And they felt the way their hands trembled on contact with the other but from one moment to the next Shire was hit in the face and thrown against a wall which he went through and knocked him unconscious. Mina just looked around and looked at Endeavor behind her, and she could see the anger in his eyes. Once Momo's team arrived, she made some chains so that he wouldn't move, not to mention that the copies of the League turned to mud and the originals disappeared. After a few minutes more heroes with the police arrested Shire. But before taking him to jail they took him to the hospital, not the one in the center. One that was in the city limits while he was unconscious they put a necklace on him that would prevent him from using his powers and handcuffed him to the hospital bed. Checked him and cured him Aizawa was the assigned hero to carry out the interrogation. How could you? Shire didn't respond and just looked at him. You are one of the best students I have ever had. I had high hopes for you, Aizawa said with a frown. Why don't you say anything? I don't even know who the fuck you are. Stop playing Todoroki. Who? Shire raised an eyebrow. My name is? Well I don't remember. But they call me Shire he looked like he was serious. But his gaze showed confusion and doubt. Aizawa didn't know if he was serious or was just pretending he didn't know anything. How long has he been pretending to be a good person? Aizawa had that question. But for that there was a solution. The police had several heroes in contact for this type of situation. So they called one the power of this hero was that he could enter people's memories and project them on his chest like a screen. They had to make Shire unconscious again to make it easier, once they did. This is interesting. What thing? Since when has he pretended to be a hero student? It's not that. This boy has no memories. No memory from one month ago. Everyone saw how the only thing that was shown on the chess screen was when he woke up and saw the members of the League. After that there was nothing, the day of the accident. Aizawa whispered to himself the doctors did more tests on him once he was conscious and came to the same conclusion as the league doctor, Amnesia. Aizawa was greatly relieved that he was telling the truth, but that would not free him from his crimes, or so he believed. Endeavor's lawyers, upon learning of the condition of the minor Todoroki, set to work. Mystical law of memory, said Aizawa looking at the papers. Exactly. This law dictates that any person who has committed crimes under diseases that affect their memory will be free, said one of the lawyers. From the few memories we saw and your testimony of what happened the day of the accident, we can conclude that the League of Villains took advantage of his vulnerable condition and used him as a puppet for his crimes. Aizawa smiled at that, but still had a doubt. What will happen to him now? The most advisable thing is to make him recover his memory as quickly as possible. According to the doctor it is not known what type of amnesia he has due to the amount of time he has been like this. He may return to being the same as before and forget everything happened without hesitation. Aizawa went to the bedrooms and explained the situation to everyone. Everyone smiled upon hearing that. Especially Mina without hesitation they went to the hospital and one by one they tried to make him remember. They took turns. They tried to do things or bring him things that made him remember several of his moments with them. It's your power Todoroki. Midoriya scream in front of him he had a serious face and just commented. It is the most corny and stupid phrase I have ever heard. I know it is my damn power. I do not understand what you are trying to do Midoriya failed. It was Momo's turn. Do you really don't remember the exam we did together? You helped me gain confidence and also. And that is supposed to be important. That which is important between us. If you have no confidence you are useless. Pathetic. He said in a cold tone Momo failed too. Not to mention he came out with tears in his eyes back Hugo's turn. Listen to me damn half and half. Know something. You look like a howler monkey. It means that the louder you scream the smaller you have. Back Hugo came out before the sentence ended they were all going in. But they were all going out quickly. Shoto's attitude was totally different with them. It was colder and sharper believing that they were trying to deceive him. After the doctors told him about the amnesia, he still believed the Shigaraki version. My turn, Mina said holding a bag with many things. I'll get Shoto back. She was nervous and trembling too much. Slowly approaching the door you can do it Mina, it's Shoto, you can get him back the pink girl said to herself as she opened the door and entered the room. Closed the door and sat in a chair next to the bed with the bag on her lap. H. Hai Sho Shoto was staring at her without saying a word, which worried Mina. D. Don't you remember me? I'm Mina. Her gaze changed to a sad one. We were. 
I already remember you. Her gaze changed to one of surprise and happiness. You're the one who made this damn scar on my eye. Her expression changed to one of horror. It seems that Shoto still believed the version of Shigaraki. No, I would never hurt you Shoto. Some tears came out of her eyes. Shoto looked at her and his cold expression did not change. Not even to see her cry Mina quickly wiped away the tears and saw him again. Then took some things out of the bag and put them in front of him, just looking at them confused. What is all this? All this is yours Mina held several of his belongings in front of him, some of his clothes, photos of him with her, with several of his friends, some personal objects of him. Everything he took from his room, but nothing made him change his serious expression and cold. But Mina would not give up so easily. She spent the whole night telling him various anecdotes that passed between them or with the others, but nothing seemed to work or so she believed. Shoto didn't know why, but Mina's voice made him calm down. And then bomb. He destroys your ice and they all return to normal, Mina said as she moved her hands to make the effects of the explosion and turned to see. Don't you remember that either? He shook his head as a sign that he did not. Ashido, we have to go back. Aizawa said from the door frame. Mina looked at the window and saw that it was already night. She did not want to leave, but she had to. Leaving Shoto alone in the hospital room. Calm down. You can come tomorrow. We already made a deal with the hospital and the director so that you take turns and help him remember that made Mina smile more than ever. The next day, she along with Yuraraka, Midoriya and Ida went to the hospital with various objects they tried to make him remember in different ways. Ida tried to remind him of the fight they had with Stain Midoriya the Bakugo rescue Yuraraka tried to remind him of some times like when he invited her to a hamburger. When she had few money that day Mina tried with more memories of his things but nothing seemed to work. He kept saying he didn't remember them. All his friends tried to do, even Bakugo. But nothing like any great event, the media took action quickly and in less than a week on all TV channels was the headline son of Endeavor hospitalized with amnesia, which made visits more difficult since more people were going to see them and Asa went to see his friend. But he did not remember him. He also called him bald Kami went to and hug him but he was more confused in knowing who these people were with Mina. She didn't know what else she could do. She was looking in Shoto's room. It was when she saw a small box under the bed and took it. Inside there was a photograph of his family. And without thinking she went to see a certain person who maybe could help her. Rei Todoroki although Shoto had told her long time ago that his mother was in the hospital. He did not tell her why, but the way he spoke of her. It was a tone of voice that was nostalgic. He missed her too much. Mina quickly went from hospital to hospital looking for her until she found the right hospital. Asking what room she was in. Saying that she was the girlfriend of his son and showing her photos with Shoto which proved it. They let her in and she went straight to the room the one Ray was in. Slowly opened the door. Excuse me. Ray Todoroki. The white-haired woman turned to see her confused. But after a few seconds recognized her. Are you Mina Ashido? Why yes. How do you? Come in. Mina went in and closed the door. Ray told her to sit down and gave her some of the letters Shoto wrote to her. In several he wrote about Mina and how wonderful she was, which made her blush. I know about my son's situation, I also want to see him, but don't worry, we are doing everything possible to make him remember. That's why I am here Ray looked at her. Mina explained that if she knew of something that could make Shoto remember, they were talking about Shoto's childhood. But what surprised Mina was that it was very few. About five minutes six years nothing more after a few hours with her, Mina yawned. Not because she was bored, because she hadn't slept enough because she was so worried about Shota. Ray looked at her and started humming a song, which made Mina open her eyes because of how beautiful she was the song. It is beautiful. Where did you listen to it? I always sang it to Shoto before sleeping when he was a child Mina smiled and saw on the clock on the wall that it was too late. She quickly said goodbye to Ray with a hug and returned to the dorms. Since the next day it was her turn to visit Shoto but when she goes, he was sleeping. She felt sad and sat next to him stroking his hair. I know you're there Shoto. Mina's voice was very depressing Shoto just kept sleeping. She didn't know why she did the next. To sleep my child, to sleep my son, to sleep peace from my heart she started to sing softly the song that Ray sang for her yesterday this child of mine he wants to sleep. And the beautiful dream it doesn't want to come Shoto while sleeping began to move, letting himself be carried by the melody of the song. But inside his mind an image was forming. It was blurred at first this cute boy he wants to sleep close your eyes and reopen them. The image was getting clearer. He could see a white-haired woman holding him while he was a baby to sleep my child to sleep my son to sleep peace from my heart this child of mine he wants to sleep. And the beautiful dream it doesn't want to come the image in his mind became totally clear. He managed to recognize the woman in his dreams. And mom, this cute boy he wants to sleep close your eyes. And reopen them after finishing the song Mina kissed him on the head. In his dreams his mother did the same and looked at him smiling. Mommy will always protect you Shoto, said his mother in his dreams and then hug him in reality. Shoto had a few tears as he was slowly waking up. Mina totally worried wiped the tears, asked Shoto. My mom, she is in the hospital Mina smiled. He managed to remember something after a long time. 
because of me she is. He couldn't finish the sentence because Mina hugged him very tight. Don't say that. You were a child. It wasn't your fault Shoto without hesitation returned the hug tightly as the days went by. Mina was the only one who managed to make him remember something in a long time. When it was her turn to visit him again, she grabbed several of the photos of his family that were in his room and that she found on the internet and put them in her backpack. Why don't you take photos of us too? Asked Momo curious. Aizawa said that it is better that he remembers his family first. And I think he is right Mina, as the last time she went to the hospital alone, when she arrived, she could see that someone else was talking to Shoto. You do not remember me. Right, said the other person in the room, then turned his gaze to Mina. What's going on? Who is he? Hi Mina. Shoto said smiling at her Mina entered the room without stopping to see the person. He says he is a friend of mine. His name is Dabai. There was a moment of silence after Shoto said the name of the black hair man. Mina just seeing him felt a chill running down her back. I feel like I've seen him before was the thought she had. She slowly took the pictures out of her backpack and gave them to Shoto. With the exception of one that had remained inside the backpack, Mina noticed it and was going to hold it. But at the moment of seeing what it was, it turned out that it was the photo Shoto had shown him as a child with his two brothers and his sister. She quickly turned to see Dabai. Then the photograph, then Dabai. At that moment some of Shoto's words came to mind that he said at the time I don't know what happened to him. He and dad went out and he, he never came back. Her eyes widened at that moment and she dropped her backpack while holding the photograph and stared at Dabai with a look of surprise and fear, which Shoto didn't notice from seeing the other photographs. But Dabai did. Why you? You. Let's talk outside pink, said the dark-haired man in a serious tone of voice and leaving the room. What's up, Mina? Do you also know him? Shoto asked looking at Mina. And no, I'll be back. If you're hungry I brought you your favorite juice. It's in my backpack Shoto smiled and Mina did as well and then left the room. She managed to see that Dabai was leaning against a wall away from the room, slowly walking towards him. There was nobody in the hallway, which made her more nervous with each step she took. She managed to stand in front of him and looked up. You are his. Mina couldn't finish because Dabai grabbed her by the neck and put her against the wall, clenching her fist tightly. W what e are you? Mina could barely say with what little air she had left. Shut up and listen to me Mina tried to loosen his grip, but she felt heat in her neck coming from Dabai's stapled hand. It was then that Mina remembered where she had seen him for the first time. Well as clone, why you tr? You tried to kill me and my, my friends. Really, that's good Mina felt a lot of helplessness at the time. But she cared more about Shoto than herself at the time, with the little strength that Dabai's wrist was holding onto her. D don't. Heard him Dabai upon hearing those words released Mina making her fall on the ground. The pink one quickly recovered air, but still did not get up. Do you really care about him? Of course, if you care so much about him, get him out of this fucking hospital right now. What? No, he still needs. Listen to me. Dabai grabbed her hair and hit her against the wall. Do you think I'm the only villain who knows he's here? W what? Many villains that the stupid of. Endeavor defeated and who escaped from prison seek revenge. Thanks to the stupid news many come on the way. I had to kill four on the way here Mina was horrified to hear that, she knew she can't get him out alone. See can you help me get him out? The stapled face man watched her for a few seconds. What do you have in mind? Mina was thinking. Taking him out the front door was stupid since he would come out in a hospital gown. She took some money out of one of the bags in her pants and gave it to Dabai. What do you want me to do with this? Go buy some clothes that are not flashy, please, you have to get it out fast. And then, I don't know. Let me think the details while you buy that, please, fine. I'll be back soon after taking the money he left quickly and Mina returned to the room trying to hide her concern. Where's Dabai? He went to buy some things for you, let me let you free. Mina approached the handcuffs that kept Shoto tied to the bed and melted them carefully not to melt Shoto's skin. However, she was unable to melt the necklace that nullified Shoto's powers. Mina stayed at the door waiting for Dabai's return. Or in the worst case scenario for other villains who wanted to attack Shoto after a few minutes Dabai returned with a bag in his hands and threw it at Shoto. Put this on. Quick Shoto covered himself with the sheet as he dressed. What Dabai brought was ripped black pants, a white shirt, and a black leather jacket, along with a black beanie, to which Mina gave Dabai a look. What? I said bring something not so flashy. He seems one of the men in black, Mina said looking at Shoto. I have to admit that you look good show. After he got dressed, Mina took her backpack and the three of them left through one of the many emergency exits that the hospital has without being seen. They were walking on the street looking sideways that they were not followed. It was when Shoto's stomach made a sound. Are you hungry Sho? I know a place where we can eat the two brothers turned to see and followed her. 
After a few minutes walking they reached a restaurant and sat at one of the tables that were in the corner furthest from the doors or windows. Do you remember this Shoto place? No, have we been here before? Here we had our first date. Mina lowered her head when saying that I'll go to the bathroom for a moment. Shoto felt very bad after hearing that and quickly went to the bathroom Mina was just looking at him. She was depressed, but still ordered the food, you know it's not his fault, right? Dab I said sitting in front of her. I know, it's just that. I want to get him back. He only knows my name, but he doesn't remember any of our moments together. Mina tried to hold back the tears. Those were the best moments of my life. I don't want them to disappear. You can take him to another place and start again, as you did. There was an awkward silence at that time. He misses you a lot. Your mother too Dabai looked away. What happened? My father. Dabai touched the burned skin of his arms. He gave me up for dead and... Nina touched his cheek and caressed it gently. I understand your pain and I am so sorry after a few seconds Shoto returned and sat next to Mina. The three of them together barely had a conversation. That was when the food arrived. What is this? Shoto asked looking at the plate of food. Soba, your favorite Shoto looked at the plate and grabbed the chopsticks and started eating slowly. Shoto smiled after trying them. See, I knew you still liked them. Mina said smiling and then whispered to Dabai. You were right. When we got out of the hospital, I saw several suspicious guys going there. What do you plan to do now? Dabai whispered while taking a drink of beer. I don't think it's a good idea to go back to the dorms yet and my house is far away, she whispered back. I'm still here Mina, said Shoto pouting. I give you attention soon Shoto. We are talking about something important Dabai gave a small smile to see Shoto in that state. What is so funny? Mina whispered again. When I was a child he made that same face when he wanted someone's attention Mina hugged Shoto and kissed his cheek many times. Don't be jealous show that only made Shoto turn very red. After eating they left the restaurant and started walking. The night had fallen so it was more difficult for them to be recognized. Mina did not understand where they were going. She and Shoto were holding hands while they were following Dabai. At a certain point Dabai stopped in front of a building and took out some keys. Where are we? Mina asked looking around. She had never visited this part of the city. My apartment, you will spend the night here and tomorrow you can go to your house. Dabai said opening the door. Letting them pass first and closing the door they went up several floors until they reached apartment 104, which was Dabai. Once they entered they saw that there was not much. A small refrigerator, a single damaged brown couch, a TV that was barely working. There was a table on which there were empty beer bottles and some cigarette butts. There were two doors. One was from the bathroom and the other that was open was from his room. It's cute. You will sleep in the room, Dabai said going to the sofa and lying down. Do not make noise Mina blushed too much and headed for the room. Shoto followed her, but stopped before entering. Dabai, does anyone else live here? No, why? Shoto was holding a white bra. It turns out it was from Toga who a few days ago went to visit to Dabai in the middle of the night. Leave that and go with the pink one. My name is Mina. Shoto quickly came in and lay down next to Mina. Heard a small cry coming from Mina. Mina was scared by everything that was happening. Not only she could die, Shoto, her friends who were like her family suddenly she felt Shoto hug her from behind, she turned to see him. She looks him in the eyes, the eyes that a long time ago were cold and full of fury now reflected happiness, had returned to be the eyes of the boy with whom Mina fell in love without hesitation she kisses him on the lips, which flushed Shoto deeply. You are here, Mina said touching the head of Shoto with the tip of her finger, and I will recover you, no matter how long it takes or what it costs me, because you are mine, she kissed him again. And you are the best thing that ever happened to me in my life. After saying that she hid her face in Shoto's chest and fell asleep. Seconds later Shoto grabbed the jacket he was wearing and with that he covered Mina for fall asleep to the next day. Shoto woke up first and looked at Mina still deeply asleep and kissed her forehead gently. After a few seconds he got up and stretched his arms a little. He managed to hear a sound that came from outside the room. Before leaving he grabbed what looked like a blanket and covered to Mina. When he left the room he saw that Dabai was having problems in the kitchen. Piece of shit, said the black hair guy hitting the oven with his foot. Something happens. This trash decomposed. Dabai after seeing Shoto had an idea. Your power is fire. Come here a moment Shoto approached. Only to be hit by an egg on his head which obviously broke. More precisely on the left side. What was that for? Start frying that Shoto began to generate the proper heat to cook it. He managed to see that Dabai from his refrigerator took out other eggs and some strips of bacon. Broke the eggs on Shoto's head and put the bacon in his arms. How long must I be like this? Like four minutes after the minutes passed. He removed the food and put it on plates with some glasses of water and they both sat at the table. Call the pink one to come to breakfast. My name is Mina. They both turned to see how Mina was standing in the doorway. She had woken up to smell the fried bacon. When she took a bite her eyes widened. It's delicious. He did it, said Dabai pointing at Shoto. Mina smiled and gave Shoto a hug. Then sat on his lap and continued eating, which made Shoto blush a lot. 
Where do you plan to go pink? Nina, and I'm going to take him my home. My parents aren't there for their jobs so no one will look for us there. Good idea after finishing breakfast and taking a quick shower. They left the apartment. To get to Mina's house they would have to take a train. Shoto was looking out the window trying to remember if he was ever there. Hey, do you know where to get something to remove hair dye? Mina whispered to Dabai. Why would I know? I saw a bottle of black hair dye in the trash can in your bathroom. That's why I thought. Any stupid store and stop checking my things Mina gave a little laugh and hugged Shoto. She still didn't have total confidence in Dabai. But he had helped them or spend the night and would help them get home. She had no way of knowing if he would attack them in the future. But for now is protecting them. It's here the three got down and started walking again mixing in the crowd. Mina walked very close to Shoto so as not to lose sight of him. Since this was a part of the city that Shoto did not know. And if they lost sight of him. It would be a problem find him first than someone else. Dabai managed to observe that Mina took some keys out of her pocket and put them in her hand and stopped in her tracks. This is my limit. They both watched and stopped too. Why? I remembered that I have some things to do. I'm sorry, don't apologize. Mina said smiling. Thank you very much for helping us. I don't know what we would have done without your help. Goodbye. This is not goodbye. Dabai interrupted Shoto. We will see each other again soon. Dabai put his hand on Shoto's head and ruffled his hair like a child. He was about to leave. Wait, you dropped a. Save that. See you after saying that. He withdrew, losing sight of both of them. Mina was confused by what he said. It was a paper that Dabai had purposely thrown away with the intention that she would grab it. When she opened it had written don't trust him and a drawing of a flame. She didn't understand what he meant. But she keeps the paper she took Shoto's hand and they arrived at Mina's house. It was a two floors house, a large garden and a somewhat classic design. But there was some remodeling. Upon entering, he managed to see that there were many photos hanging on the walls. He smiled when he saw some where Mina was as a child. The first thing Mina did was change her clothes and grab a little more money. Show. I have to go out to buy something. I'll be back quickly. Just don't go out after saying that. The pink girl left and closed the door. Shoto stayed exploring the house. There were several rooms upstairs, although curiosity was winning. He had a feeling that Mina would get angry if he entered in and he just sat on the couch and decided to wait for Mina's return. Mina was shopping for hair dye removers. She didn't know which one would be the right one, since Shoto's hair had gone through several color changes and she wants him to go back to his Christmas candy style. She just bought one of each to be safe and came home. When she came back she noticed that Shoto had fallen asleep on the couch. She smiled and snuggled next to him and fell asleep. Two after hours passed. She woke up first and went to prepare the hair mixes. Show, get up. Mina began to shake him until he opened his eyes, guided him to the bathtub, and told him to take off all his clothes. The sink that Mina had was not so big to fit Shoto's head. She put some mixtures that would make foam so that Shoto didn't feel so naked once she got into the bathtub. Mina settled his head on the edge using a towel as a pillow and was putting the mixtures one by one to remove the dye. Little by little, the water was staining a light orange. It was working but it still hadn't been removed. She tried another that had no effect. The next two didn't work either. She grabs another one that managed to completely clear the right part, turning it back to white, which made her smile. Show, keep trying to take away what is missing with any of these. I'll be back Shoto nodded and Mina go out. Put on another of the mixes which apparently had not yet taken effect. His hair was totally white on the right side, but on the left it was a combination between Orange, black and dark red. Not the original red he managed to see that Mina had returned. But she was wearing a bathrobe. Which seconds after she dropped leaving Shoto totally flushed and gaped. She was wearing a small, totally black two-piece swimsuit. It showed a lot of her great figure and very little to my imagination. I slowly entered the bathtub with him and began to try to remove the dye she was lying with her chest against Shoto's while she ran her fingers through the mixture of colors that he had in his hair. She was at that for a while until little by little the hair was lightening. Her happiness would not go away for nothing in the world, and she manages to return it to normal she smiled like never before and decided to stay with Shoto in the bathtub while the phone covered them. I missed your Christmas hair so she laid her head on Shoto's chest and heard his heartbeat, which was going at a fast pace, which made her giggle at that. If not because their skin was wrinkling too much and they could get a cold, got out of the tub, dried off and dressed Mina put on a blue full-length pajamas made from a very soft and cool fabric, while she bought a sport shorts and a non sleeve shirt for Shoto. They weren't that expensive, but at least they would help him get through the night better. After they had a load of food they ordered from a local restaurant, they went to Mina's room. It was not that different from the one in the dorms. Mina lay down in the corner and waited for Shoto to lie down. When he did she snuggled into his chest. He just smiled while gently stroking her hair and horns until she fell asleep. After a few seconds she did Shoto just stared at her as sleep slowly took hold of him. It was when a gentle knock on the bedroom window made him react. He opened his eyes when he saw the person on the other side, Titoga. 
T. Toga. The blonde only made signs for him to leave the house, which Shoto already understood because they had invented them when they did missions and they had to be silent. Carefully got out of bed to avoid waking Mina. Covered her with the blanket that she wore. Put on some shoes and left without making noise once outside. More specifically in the front garden. He tried to find his blonde friend who suddenly jumped up to him and hugged him tightly. Shoto was not going to stay without answering the hug. Which he did. I missed you so much Shire. I missed you too Toga. But you know that's not my name. I know. But it's better than Shoto. Shoto just laughed at that comment. Then remembered something important. How did you know I was here? Because I'm always stalking you. Toga said as if it were the most normal thing in the world. Why? Because I don't want any crazy girl to come near to you. Shoto knew that Toga's intentions were good with him. But still he didn't understand why she was there. They both went to a tree near the house and climbed it. I'm going to America, Toga said quickly. Shoto turned to see her with surprise. It seems that she had come to say goodbye. Toga just kept her gaze straight ahead. Why you are leaving? Shigaraki wants the league to expand and not just stay in Japan. Dabai and I will leave in a few days. Do you also know him? Something like that. He is the other member of the league. I still don't understand why he take you to his department. He only lets me go when he wants to fuck. It doesn't matter. Do you have a relationship with him? Something like that. We fought a few days ago and he hasn't spoken to me since then. But he was the one who insisted that only he and I go to America so I think he still loves me. Who is not going to love you? Your adorable Toga blushed more and she hugged him tighter. I wish you could come with us so we would be together all the time and do fun things. Toga slowly approached Shoto's face to bring their lips together again. But at the last second she stopped and only looked into his eyes. But you love that pink girl Shoto blushed and nodded sheepishly. But I want you for me Shire this time Shoto was surprised and opened his eyes at the words that the blonde girl was saying. Which took his hand and moved closer to him. You were the first to accept me for who I was. You don't mind taking advantage of my power. You love me for who I am and I love you too, T. Toga. Don't be mad about this Toga didn't resist anymore and took Shoto by the cheeks and kissed him deeply. Making their tongues meet and join, Shoto was totally flushed and had no idea how to react to what Toga was doing. If it weren't for the lack of air, Toga would not have separated. She was slowly separating from the lips of the bicolor boy, but she did not stop sucking his tongue and then biting his lower lip. Don't hate me, I had to. At least once Shoto was still in shock from what had just happened. After a few seconds he came to himself and looked at Toga. I would never hate you, I love you too much, Shoto said caressing the blonde girl's cheek, but in a different way. How? As my best friend Toga got a bit depressed after hearing that. But she was still happy since she knew that the boy still cared. Before leaving she gave Shoto one last hug. Jumped from the tree and disappeared into the shadows of the night Shoto just waved his hand in goodbye. But this would not be the last time he would see Toga. He only wanted one thing. That Toga not get in trouble. But he knew that was almost impossible he came down from the tree and went back to the room with Mina. Who woke up when Shoto lay down and made noise because of the mattress. Where did you go Shou? Asked Mina sleepy. I went to the bathroom. Sorry to wake you up. Mina just smiled and kissed him softly and then snuggled with him. Shoto just hugged her softly to fall asleep soundly the next day. Mina woke up first than him, but she didn't want to wake him up since she thought he looked very cute sleeping. She just kept playing with his hair after a few minutes Shoto woke up and kissed her. Did you sleep well? Asked the pink girl with a smile on her face. Amazing. They both got up and made breakfast. They didn't get so complicated as they made cereal. We have to go back to the dorms today show. Do you remember where it is? No, I'm sorry. Is it close? Not so much. All those who visited you are our friends. Do you remember any of them? No names. I remember the explosive bitch. The useless one who only creates things. The strange frog. The portable charger. Being with the league so much had even changed the way he spoke. Mina hit him on the head. Call them by their names. Soon you will see them and it is not good that you insult them. Fine Mina kissed his head for the blow she gave him. But we don't have to go now, Mina said shaking her head with an idea. Do you want us to take another bath together? Shoto choked on his food and nodded in shame and then went to the bathtub with Mina. After about four hours they went to the dorms Mina led Shoto back to the dorms. He did not remember the building at all. She opened the door and saw that many of their friends were in the room. Slowly they both entered and stopped behind them. Hello guys. Mina said smiling they all turned and went to them. Mainly Shoto. He felt uncomfortable for all of them surrounding him and asking him things that he did not know how to answer. It made him feel bad that they were worried about him and he did not remember them. He barely remembered their names. And they were by Nick names he gave them. I want to go to my room. Mina, can we? Sure show. We'll be back in a while they all nodded and Mina took Shoto to his room and still nothing came back to his mind. Although it did not seem like it, Mina was worrying too much that his memories would never return. But even if it took her a lifetime, she would not leave him alone until to get them back Mina put him on the bed and went to the kitchen to prepare something for him. Shoto stared at his room trying to remember whatever it was. He looked around and only saw his UA sports uniform which did not remind him of anything. 
the style of room seemed somewhat uncomfortable and even the clothes that were supposedly his, nothing worked although he did not show it. He was beginning to fall into depression Mina came back with some sandwiches and a big smile on her face. They both sat on the edge of the bed and ate. Mina took the pictures out of her backpack, but before she put them away, Shoto grabbed them and stared at them. What's up show? W I want to go see mom Mina was surprised at such words, she did not expect him to say that. W Y. I want to see her, oh okay show, if you want we will go tomorrow Shoto smiled and kissed Mina's cheek. At night, everyone was sitting in the living room playing a board game, even Shoto, but only at Mina's request. She was sitting in front of him and she was doing well in the game. She suddenly gave a scream to which Shoto and everyone saw her. Mina turned and saw the reason. Mind to you idiot. I couldn't resist, said the useless sticky-haired dwarf Minda had touched Mina's butt and planned to go back to his room. But before that Shoto grabbed him by the neck and threw him against the wall with such force that it broke it. As Sho, calmed down Shoto ignored Mina and those who tried to stop him, grabbed Minda by the neck and began to beat him repeatedly until he spit blood. They were all terrified of how violent his friend had become. Touch her again and I'm really going to hurt you. Do you understand? Minda could barely move. Do you understand or not you piece of shit? Minda with difficulty nodded and Shoto released him. Minda could barely get up and go back to her room. Shoto turned to Mina worried. You're good. Mina was a bit scared by what she had just seen. She still couldn't believe what she had seen. No one could believe it. But they didn't feel bad for Minda. As he deserved it Mina nodded and gave him a hug. But it was just to calm him down. Thanks Sho everyone was still looking at him with doubt. All they saw was a mix between what was his friend and ex-member of the League of Villains. And the two versions of Shoto combined protected Mina too much and in a dangerous way almost everyone had the same thought. If he was able to that just because somebody touched her. They don't even want to imagine what he would be able to do if someone hurts her the next day. Mina took Shoto to the hospital where Rei was. Shoto was nervous, although he should not be, since it is his mother who is going to see, he did not realize when they came to be in front of the door. Sho, calm down. She won't hurt you Shoto nodded and opened the door. Ray was sitting on the edge of the bed and as soon as she saw him, her eyes wore. Hi baby Shoto got a slight headache. The memory of when she sang to him as a child came to mind. The same woman who took care of him and protected him, the same woman his father beat. And mom. Yes Sho, Ray said smiling and shedding a few tears. See can I hug you? Ray did not respond. She hugged him with all her strength and could not contain the tears of happiness. Shoto returned the hug and hid his face in his mother's white hair. Forgive me mom. Everything is my fault. Everything has always been mine. Don't say that Shoto. Nothing was your fault from the tone of voice he had. Mina knew that he was broken and he was keeping that. Even before losing his memory he had that saved for himself. Mina left the room because she felt like a third wheel. She waited on the bench outside the room. After a few minutes Shoto said that she could come in and Ray hugged her too. Shoto smiled and went out to get them something to eat. It was going to last a while since he did not remember the halls of the hospital. I I saw him. Mina whispered. What did you say Mina? I saw him. Who? Asked Ray confused. Why your son? Taoya. Ray opened her eyes in great surprise. T. Taoya. Where? He took us out of the hospital. Saved us from some villains who wanted to kill Shoto. Ray smiled at those words. Mina kept telling her more about him. Except the part about trying to kill her a while ago. Shoto returned with some pieces of fruit and got ready to eat with his girlfriend and his mother the day after the hospital visit. Shoto would return to class after a long time. Mina had let him sleep with her in her room. Mina's room style was somewhat awkward for Shoto, but he wasn't going to criticize her after they both dressed and ate their breakfast. Mina took his hand and they walked to Yue. Once they entered they all stared at Shoto with some fear, with the thought that he would hurt them or that he killed someone. No matter what they would have been informed that he didn't hurt anyone even Class B looked at him with bad eyes. But Shoto did not care about what they thought. Once he got to class, he sat in his seat and just looked forward in total silence. Something like the usual Todoroki class had started normally. With the difference that Shoto didn't know anything about the topics they were explaining. Mathematics nothing, not even the calculator helped him music. Accidentally melted his instrument quirks training. He froze and burned his opponents, which were Siro and Jiru. Again, Siro exclaimed trapped in the ice of Todoroki. Again, asked Shoto. Isn't it the first time I've frozen you? Sadly no show. Mina said trying not to laugh. Melt it? Why I would do that? Mina hit him on the head again. Because I say so. Mina put her hands on her hips and looked like she was scolding him. Go. Now Shoto just obeyed her and melted Siro. Then he went to the dressing room. No one got in his way. Not even Bakuga. You don't have to be afraid of him. He's the same Shoto as always. Mina said smiling. He is not Ashido. Kaminari said helping Jiru. It is different. And we all know it. Jiru said, rubbing her headphones that were a little burned, he didn't even apologize. Mina just looked down to not want to listen anymore. Maybe he had a bit of evil inside of him, and it was something that she didn't want to accept. He is good. 
Nina yelled at everyone with tears in her eyes. Shoto is good. Even if you don't want to believe it what they did not know is that Shoto was on the other side of the door listening to everything. Just hearing Mina's voice almost on the verge of crying made him break inside. He was blaming himself as he pressed his fists so hard that they began to bleed and stain his suit in the ground. Oh, thank goodness Toga is not here remembering his best friend encouraged him a bit, since more than once Toga took blood from him while he was sleeping or if he made a cut somewhere she would suck it. More than once he was surprised to see another Shoto when he woke up sleeping next to him after class. They both went to see a movie and then went back to the dorms, where Aizawa gave an envelope to Shoto. What is this? It's a permit. Your father asked for it this morning. He wants to talk to you about something. He didn't say what. See can I go with him? Sorry. He asked him to go alone. After saying that Aizawa retired to his room, it's okay Mina, I'll go alone. Shoto smiled at her and started reading the letter. I must see him in his office at 8 that is something early. I will arrive at 10. Mina gave a little laugh and they both went to her room just to snuggle into bed. Mina gave the excuse that she was cold the next day. Mina felt a little lonely because of Shoto's absence in class. She tried to call or text him, but there was no response. I have a bad feeling after class. Mina was the first to arrive in the dorms hoping to see Shoto. She went to her room and found him sleeping there peacefully. She smiled and sat on the edge and stroked his red hair half. I'm glad you're okay Shoto. She looked away inside Shoto's shirt and something caught her attention. She carefully lifted Shoto's shirt so as not to wake him. She saw that he had several recent bruises and bruises. Also, so what looked like burned skin her skin turned pale with fear. And she quickly went for the first aid kit that was in the kitchen and came back quickly, grabbing some cream and gently rubbing it all over Shoto's body, which obviously made him wake up. Mina, what are you? Please sit Shoto just obeyed Mina's request and sat on the edge. She just passed the cream and a little bandage around his body, still worried about what happened, but she had already gotten the idea. How did you end up so hurt? That idiot hit me with something on the head. Shoto lowered his head and moved his white hair a little, revealing a large bruise shortly after he went to his office. They did not speak much and went to the Todoroki resident. There was no one and as soon as they entered Endeavor hit Shoto with a vase on the head leaving him unconscious and then hit him with his fists or some object. Even he burned him. But it was not so light the worst father in the world was still resentful because of what happened in the hospital and that his son threatened him without knowing that he was his father. He did not care. After Shoto regained consciousness, it took him too much to move. He grabbed his things and called a taxi to return. But before leaving Endeavor said the phrase nobody raises a hand to me Mina hugged him gently so as not to cause him pain. But he did not care about the pain, since he was constantly used to it. He hugged her back, relax, I'm fine. Stop saying that. Mina yelled clearly angry and with tears in her eyes. Shoto just looked away to which Mina hid her face in his neck. I do not want you to suffer more. Tomorrow we will go to the hospital and do not argue, Mina said in a serious tone of voice. Shoto sighed and nodded. To then make Mina snuggle next to him, she didn't hug him so as not to hurt him, but he did her. The next day, after they went to the hospital and gave Shoto some painkillers and bandages, they planned to go back to the dorms. Shoto told the doctor that he got hurt in a fight. While they were three blocks from the bedrooms, a car pulled up next to them and Endeavor exited. Shoto, come in, said the red-haired fire face. Why? Just come in, we have to talk. He will not go with you, Mina said angrily. Please I ask you to leave. This is none of your business, Pink. Endeavor approached them both with a frown. Come in. Fuck you old man, Shoto said angrily. Mina gave a little laugh at what Shoto said. It made her laugh to hear him insult. Let's see if this sounds funny brat. Endeavor clenched his fist and moved it quickly in the direction of Mina's face. Quickly a shard of ice pierced Endeavor's fist making him scream and fall to the ground. Without hesitation Shoto put Mina behind him while making sure she was okay. Endeavor stood up with a glare at both of them. I do not care that you are my son. You will regret that. It's enough. The three of them turned to see the person who said that. Shoto and Mina were shocked. You again. Nice to see you again Endeavor. Didabai, they both said. 